Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number 10 from the specimen paper of the Pure Mathematics P1 Cambridge um, 9709 syllabus. And this is the paper one. And this question here is about the equation of circles, coordinate geometry with circles. Now, in this question here, they told us that the circle given by the formula x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 2y minus 20 equals 0 has center C and passes through the points A, B. State the coordinates of C. Now, this is a pretty simple question, and I can write down the answer straight away as minus 2 and 1. All right, and now you might be asking, how can you write the answer straight away? Well, I'll show you. I mean, you can spot it straight away by looking at this formula, but for you to understand why, what you have to understand is that the um, the form in which it's easy for us to read the center and the radius, which we're not actually asked to find here, and the radius of a circle is the form where you have it written in this completed square form. So x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. That's the general form. That's the form of the equation of a circle from which you can write down the center is whatever makes the value of x, which makes this bracket 0, which is going to be plus a. And the value of y, which makes this bracket 0, which is plus b. And the radius would be basically the number there, there that the square root of that number. All right, so of course we don't have to actually um, you know, find the radius here. And you'll understand very soon why, uh, why the answer I gave was basically a half of the x you know, um, coefficient, but the opposite sign and a half of the y coefficient with the opposite sign because if I take this and write it in this form which you don't really have to do it in this in this question as I said because it's quite easy it's only worth one mark but if you were going to show your steps of how to find the center of the circle and what you would do you'd rewrite this in that form okay so I'll show you how that's done just you know for your further information so you have x squared plus 4x I'll write the x terms together the x squared and the x term, and then the y squared and the y term, I'll write them together. So y squared minus 2y, and whatever's here, I'll add it to both sides. Minus 20, add 20 to both sides to get rid of this. It's going to be 20 over there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square for these two terms. Okay, if I complete the square for these two terms, I'm left with x plus 2 squared. Remember, you... It's in the form, the, the, the way that we need it. We have 1x squared. So you write down a square bracket and you write x. If it's a plus, you write plus, And then a half of the coefficient of this x term. And then you take away the square of this number, which is going to be 4. All right, so x plus 2 squared minus 4. And then you got plus. You do the same for this. You have y. There's a minus, write a minus. Then a half of this coefficient. Just the coefficient. That will give you 1 squared minus the square of this number which is 1 and that's equal to 20 so you can see why did I put the minus 4 here because if I square this bracket I get x squared plus 4x plus 4 well I only have x squared plus 4x and I have the plus 4 so I've got to take away the 4 to make this the same as that and similarly if I square this bracket I get y squared minus 2y plus 1 well I don't have a plus 1 all right so to make this to to make this the same as that I have to take away the 1. So now when I expand this, I end up with that. So these two now are exactly the same. So this gives us basically x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals, and then this is minus 4 and minus 1, which is minus 5, added to both sides equals 25. So here we can see that the value of x that makes this bracket 0 is negative 2, and the value of y that makes this bracket 0 is 1. So it's always basically whatever number's in here with the opposite sign. That's the center. That's the x value. That's the y value for the center. And if they ask us to find the radius, well, the radius would be the square root of 25, which would be 5. But the question did not ask us to find that. So in this question, it's perfectly fine for you to just write down the answer directly. And it's quite easy to do that because you, you should realize when you, complete, when you do complete the square, all right, then you're going to have half of this coefficient and a half of that coefficient. Okay, and that's the reason why you're going to have half this coefficient, but with the opposite sign. And half of this coefficient, but with the opposite sign. So that's how I could write down minus 2 and plus 1 without having to actually complete the square for this question. But it's good for you to understand where it comes from. It's not a very wise thing to do just to memorize, uh, you know, uh, how to answer questions 
without understanding the basis behind them. Okay, and this is the reason. This is this is the general equation for the uh, you know um, circle. Okay, and it's it's good for you to understand that. So there's part A of that question done. Now for part B, it says it's given that the midpoint D of AB has coordinates one and a half, one and a half, and B AB is basically just a chord of the circle, right? Yeah, because it just passes through the points AB. It doesn't say it's a diameter or anything. So it says, find the equation of AB, giving your answer in the form Y equals MX plus C. So just for the purposes of being able to visualize what's going on for the understanding of the students here, I'm going to just draw a little circle. Okay, we know the center of the circle, as we said, was minus 2, 1. That's C, minus 2, 1. Okay, and the point A is 1 and a half, 1 and a half. So that would be somewhere... Somewhere up here in relation to that. We don't know exactly where. Just, 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 it's just a sketch thing. So um, that's the... Oh, no, that, that's not what that is. Sorry. It's not over there. A, B are two points, okay, on the circle, which we don't know the coordinates. But I'm assuming that it's going to be... D is going to be somewhere in this region here. So let's, let's just draw a line, um, A, B, like this. Let's say this is A and let's say this is B. And it says D is the midpoint of AB. So D has coordinates uh, one and a half. Let's say let's write it as three over two, three over two, one and a half, one and a half. So that's the point D, the midpoint of AB. Okay. All right. And then it says find the equation of AB. So we've got to find the equation of this line. Now, one of the things that we should understand from our understanding of circles is that when you have a chord of the circle which is cut exactly in half. By the radius, which this would be if you if you continue the circle, that, that could be the radius, right? This would be a line that cuts this chord into two equal halves. Okay, this would be the radius. Why? Because it comes from the center of the circle. So when a chord is is bisected by the radius, then it always also by it always bisects at 90 degrees. Okay, so the line C D is perpendicular to the line A B. My understanding of the geometry of circles okay that's something that we should understand all right so that's one rule that we should know from IGCSE maps we, we should know that okay so that means that the line CD and the line AB are perpendicular so we've got to find the equation of AB AB is a straight line to find the equation of a straight line we need two things we need to know the gradient of that line and we need to know any point on the line which we do D is on that line and D has uh, the, the coordinates, as we've been told, 3 over 2, 3 over 2, 1 and a half, 1 and a half. Okay, so how do we find the gradient of AB? Well, the gradient of AB is such that it is going to be perpendicular to the gradient of CD. It's perpendicular to CD. So AB is perpendicular to CD, as we've just written now. So if we find the gradient of AB, so if we find the gradient of CD, which we can do because we know the coordinates of both those points, we can then find the gradient of AB. So the gradient of CD is going to be given by, now we're going to have the change in Y, so we have 3 over 2 minus 1 over the change in X, which is 3 over 2 minus minus 2. Okay, so that's going to give us 3 over 2 minus 1 is a half over, this is um, 3 over 2 plus 2, which is going to be um, 3 over 2 plus 2, 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2, that plus, sorry, 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2, that's 7 over 2. So you have a half divided by 7 over 2, which is a half times 2 over 7, so it's equal to 1 over 7. Okay, so the gradient of CD is 1 seventh. So we can say the gradient of CD is 1 over 7, so therefore the gradient of AB is the negative reciprocal of 1 over 7. Because two lines are perpendicular, the gradients are negative reciprocals. So the gradient of AB would be, you change the signs, it's going to be negative, and you write it upside down, so it's 7 over 1, which is 7. So now we have enough information for us to find the gradient or the equation of the line. We know that it passes through the point D, which has got coordinates 3 over 2, 3 over 2. So we can say Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. All right, you can even use y equals mx plus c as well if you want. Um, I always like to use this. I prefer this always. But anyway, you have y, e, y minus 3 over 2 equals m, which is minus 7 times x minus 3 over 2. 
those are both the x and y coordinates. So you have y minus 3 over 2 equals minus 7x plus, and that's minus 7 times minus 3, which is plus 21 over, over 2. And so we have y equals minus. Now, how do they want us to write the answer? Okay, they want to write it as y is a subject, so y equals mx plus c. So you have y equals minus 7x plus 21 over 2 plus 3 over 2. So you have y equals minus 7x, and that's going to be plus 24 over 2, which is plus 12. That is the equation of the line AB, okay, in the form y equals mx plus c. Now, we could have also answered the question by using y equals mx plus c and substituting these values in here. That's perfectly fine as well. So like 3 over 2 equals m, which is minus 7, times 3 over 2 plus c. So we can find what c is. That's 3 over 2 equals minus 21 over 2 plus c. So c is equal to 3 over 2 plus 21 over 2, which is 24 over 2, which is 12. So then we can say y equals minus 7x plus 12. Same answer. Both of those ways are fine. Okay, so a lot of students prefer to use this method and there's no problem with that whatsoever. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. Now I think we've got to go to part C. Does it have a part C? Yes, it does. So it says find by calculation the x coordinates of A and B. Now, if we look back here, A and B are where the line that we found the equation of and this, this line has the equation y equals 7x um, minus 7x plus 12 this line and this uh, circle where they meet a and b are the points where the circle and the line meet okay so the intersection between these two you got to find the intersection between these two okay so how do we do that well we have to solve the equations sim simultaneously we've got to solve these two equations simultaneously so what i'm going to do is i'm going to substitute this equation into that equation. So wherever I see y, I'll replace it with minus 7x plus 12. So here I've got x squared plus, instead of y, I'm going to write minus 7x plus 12. And they only want the x coordinates, so we're not going to uh, have to find the y coordinates afterwards. So, you know, it's good to have the equation just in x then. So minus 7x plus 12 squared, because that's y squared, plus 4x minus 2 times, again, we're going to put y instead of x, so minus 7x plus 12. It's not squared this time because that's just y and minus 20 equals zero. So now this will give me an equation just in x and I should have the two coordinates for a and b, the x coordinates of a and b. So now let me just um, expand this. So x squared plus, now this is going to give me, if I expand this, 49 x squared. Okay, and then I'm going to have these two multiplied and then double. That's 84 times 2. So it's minus 168 x. 12 squared is 144 plus 4x, that's going to be plus 14x, minus 2 times 12, that's minus 24, and minus 20 equals 0. So we've got x squared and 49x squared, that's 50x squared. We've got minus 168x plus, that's going to be uh, plus, hold on, there's a mistake here, that's 14. It's not an x there, right? Minus 2 times 12 is plus... Um, one second, what did I do? No, I'm right. It is plus 14x, sorry. Minus 2 times... Yeah, plus, so you've got 18x. So you have minus 6, 168x plus 18x. That's minus 158. 150x, sorry. Minus 168x plus 18x. That's 150x. Sorry about that little brain freeze there then you got 144 minus 44 so that's going to be plus 100 equals zero so here we can see this is nice and simple if you divide by 50 all right all of both sides of the equation you'll end up with x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals zero okay and now we can um try to factorize this will this factorize I don't think it will because two numbers multiplied to give you plus two and, and yes it will actually you have x minus two and x minus one it will factorize that's going to get x squared minus x minus two x plus two that's right so x equals two and x equals one those are the x coordinates of a and b now do they tell us anything about which is which 
No, they didn't. All right, so A and B could be either one of these two, so it doesn't matter. So the x ones of A and, A and B, okay, are 2 and 1. And there's the answer to question number 10. I think it is 10. Yep, from this specimen paper, pure mathematics P1. I think that was, a, uh, that was the last part of this question as well. Yes, 11 is a different question. So other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this section of this region over here. Other questions from the topic of coordinate geometry and circles in particular can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the video that will be linked in this region here will tell you how to use my channel to find um, content that you might be interested in from my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.